it's lovely that you're able to join us. These are the times we live in, it's really strange, but kind of getting together groups of students and connecting them with each other and connecting obviously parents as well, and just keeping you involved and connected with the school is really important. And obviously this is a really important piece of work that we do in the school. So it's lovely to be able to just welcome you. And even though we'd love to have you in the school hall and have this conversation all together, I know that you're going to get a lot from just hearing from Ms. Corbushley tonight and also from our lovely students. So it's that great opportunity to make connections across year groups as well as within your year group. So lovely. And I hope that you're all managing and getting on with your learning and doing well. We miss you terribly. We wish that we could have you in school with us. But without further ado, I'll hand over to Miss Corbishley. Okay, hopefully you can hear me now. Lovely. Okay, so um, if I just go back to that first screen, sorry. Um, on the Fernhill flyers, in terms of um, getting you engaged, hopefully, um, I think most of you in Year 7 have managed to join the yeah, Google yeah. class. Um, I sent an invitation out to everybody via Show My Homework. Um, if you haven't joined the Google Classroom, the class code is there and your invite is on Show My Homework. Um, we've also got an Instagram account, Fernhill underscore flyers. So if you're on Instagram, follow that. And we tend to put all uh, the information on there for all year groups. So you'll see things that are relevant to you, but you'll also see things that are relevant to the sixth form and GCSE students. And you will be them one day. So it is all relevant, really. OK, so what is the Fernhill Flyers programme? Um, the mission statement that we have at Fernhill School really is that all students are able and are entitled to an education that is stimulating and challenging. Um, so obviously, we do spend a lot of time making sure that um, children are able to access our curriculum. But we also realise that we have a huge number of students at Fernhill who are already academically um, achieving quite highly for their age group. Um, so we want to make sure that those students are given the extra um, push and the extra nudge they need in order to achieve as highly as they possibly can. Um, provision of, uh, provision of um, teaching and learning for our high attaining pupils, HAP for short, is a matter of equality of opportunity. So obviously we know that in this country we have state schools, we also have private schools, um, and we believe that regardless of what kind of educational setting you're attending, you should still have the same access to the same really high quality opportunities. Um, and also in providing these opportunities for our HAP students, we're of course improving standards for, for everybody. And it might be as a parent, you are sitting there this evening with one child who is a Fernhill Flyer and maybe one child who isn't at the moment on the programme. I know there's at least one of you in that situation. Um, so the Fernhill Flyer programme is, um, it's flexible. Um, and I'll come on to how students can become flyers um, later on. But what we've done initially at the beginning of year seven is we've looked at all the data that the teachers have garnered from your son or daughter over the autumn term. Um, we've looked at what their primary school have told us, we've looked at all the many, many assessments they've done in all their subjects and looked at what their target grades for GCSE are. And based on that, that's how we've decided who to invite onto the Fernhill Flyers programme. OK, so you're on the programme, you are a Fernhill Flyer. What does this mean? OK, how will you and your child benefit from this? Um, OK, so first of all, in the classroom, Classroom. Sorry, my sound went a bit strange then. Um, so in the classroom, we have um, stretch and challenge and differentiation um, that all the classroom teachers um, do every day in their lessons. So what you can see on the screen here is a little extract from a document that all the teachers have, uh, which helps them to differentiate for those high attaining students. Looking at typical behaviours of um, high attaining students, the kinds of things that they are um, needing in addition. So for example, high challenge in lessons, more choice about what they get to, to do, exploration, inquiry, things like the opportunity to work at an increased pace, um, perhaps to start from what they already know, which might be significantly more than their peers. Um, so within the classroom, we have the stretch and challenge there. We also have, of course, extracurricular opportunities. 
Now, at the moment, these are somewhat limited because of the situation, but there are still lots of virtual um, opportunities available, and I've started to share some of them. And thank you. I know some students in Year 7 have already said they would like to take part in our virtual speaking competition, which is great. Um, we also have super curricular challenges. Now, this was launched to the whole school shortly before Christmas. Um, and in our Christmas, um, I think a week before the, the final week of term, we had a next steps day where we actually looked at the super curriculum. I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, once your child gets further up the school, so in year nine, when they begin choosing their GCSEs and beyond, when they are doing their GCSEs, preparing for university, um, we will be there to give them advice on their applications and their A-level choices. And we have with us this evening our three sixth form mentors, Rio, Christina and Luke. So these are mentors in Key Stage 3, uh, for Key Stage 3. They're in their final year at Fernhill uh, and they are all um, in the process of waiting to hear back from their university um, applications. And it's their job to um, help our younger members of the school to get the most um, out of being a Fernhill flyer. So we'll hear from them a bit later. Okay, so the super curriculum. I know some of you have already looked at this. This is something um, that you can find on our website. It is um, in addition to, shall I say, the uh, curriculum that your student is, your son or daughter is doing in school. This is not designed to be extra work. This is designed to enhance their, their passion for whatever subject um, they're passionate about. Within this super curriculum, there are three challenges per subject per year, uh, above and beyond the classroom. And it builds on what we call cultural capital. So um, it's things like visiting museums, um, listening to really interesting science programs on Radio 4, for example, things like wider reading, um, looking at plays and looking at exciting maths websites with interesting puzzles and code breaking and that kind of thing. So here is an example of um, a year 10 drama um, super curriculum and you can see here challenge one, challenge two, challenge three. Uh, the easiest level is figuring it out, the next level up is freewheeling and the final level is flying and reward points are allocated for each of these tasks. Now, if a student completes all the flying tasks um, in any subject, they will become a Fernhill flyer in that subject. Um, and I know that we had a student in year eight um, last week who just completed all their all their flying some challenges for English. So they became a Fernhill flyer. I know it was brilliant. It was really nice to be able to add her name to our flyers. So that's something that's on the school website under learning um, and Fernhill flyers. It's there. Your son or daughter can access that at any time. And they're they're fun things that they can get involved with. Um, this is an example. Um, this is also on our school website. These are just some of the places that you can go to to find extra resources. Um, I really recommend the BBC iPlayer. It's fantastic. And as you will know from the news at the moment, um, there's lots and lots of educational content that um, the BBC is putting out to help with home learning, which is fabulous. Um, the Royal Society, um, they ran a really great competition last term, um, their Young Writers Competition, um, and uh, a young lad in year eight at Fernhill won that competition, and he's got all those five amazing science books. Yep, I gave them to him last week, so that's lovely. Um, the British Library has a really great um, reference section. Now, that might sound quite boring, the British Library, but actually they've got original manuscripts um, from Shakespeare, from Isaac Newton. They've got John Lennon's original um, handwritten um, lyrics, and it's really great. Once lockdown is over, it's a really great place to go and visit. Enrich is a really great maths um, website. Lots of different puzzles and games um, and competitions from, from year six, I think, right up to year 13. And I know that Luke in year 13 has, has created some great puzzles based on that. Um, so I'm just going to talk briefly about our partnership with Balliol College, um, which is part of Oxford University. Pravahi Osman is the outreach officer for Balliol, and I work quite closely with her um, and Mrs Ellis on this. Um, and we meet with her regularly, and she is able to offer us 
um, Fernhill School specifically, um, some really great opportunities for your son and daughter. So let me go through what they are. Um, last term, they delivered some key stage three maths classes to students in year eight, um, which was really great. So students in year eight, um, I think it was for two consecutive weeks, had um, I think five or six students with one maths professor from Oxford University. And it was a super curricular maths session. It was looking at the importance of prime numbers. And hopefully, I mean, I, the feedback I got from the students was that they absolutely loved it. And the feedback I got from uh, the maths teacher was that he thought it was amazing. Um, so that was a really lovely thing they, for them to do, to look at how maths can become a career for them um, and that it's not you know, just in the classroom. Um, academic workshops and visits, various different subjects um, on offer. Um, we can actually go to Oxford University and spend time um, in the university with the professors, looking at the laboratories, speaking to students. Um, one of the lovely things that Oxford are able to offer us is a sort of behind the scenes museum tours as well. We can actually go and see the parts of the museum that aren't open to the public and meet the curators and they can talk about the artifacts that are on, um, on display there. Of course, Oxford offers options choices, GCSE and post 16. They can help with personal statements and admissions interviews when it comes to university. Um, they are working with us as teachers at Fernhill um, to help us um, improve our own uh, professional development enable, to enable us to push your son or daughter as, as much as we can with different teaching approaches. Taster days, now these are university taster days, they're not just open to students, they're open to parents as well. Um, at the moment there are lots of virtual taster days, but obviously as lockdown eases we'll be able to physically go there. Um, and they also have a Floriat programme, which is a sustained contact programme over a number of years, um, something that we have to apply for separately for that. Um, Opportunities for All, offered by Oxford University, which they share with us. Um, Target Oxbridge is a, a particularly good one. Um, it's specifically aimed at underrepresented uh, groups at Oxford University. Um, and it's really lovely because it, it really helps students to see that people at Oxford aren't all, you know, white middle class public school educated people. They are normal people who look and sound like the rest of us. Um, and Target Oxbridge is a really great scheme for that. Um, they also run a student shadowing scheme, workshops, conferences, lots of competitions, podcasts. I could go on. Um, mm. If you have any questions specifically about the um, partnership that we have with Oxford University, um, you can email outreach at Balliol ox.ac.uk um, and I would recommend that you um, have a look at their website balliol.ox.ac.uk um, and you can register for their outreach newsletter um, to keep up to date with everything on there. Um, so that's my part of talking done with. Um, I've just noticed we've got some year 10 students who've joined us as well now um, which is great. So if anyone has any questions for any of our year 10, year 11 or year 13 students, or for me, or for Mrs Ellis, if you'd like to, you can unmute yourself or put them in the chat and you can ask us now. <laughs> Maybe, Miss Corbishley, I you know if we're, waiting for people to just kind of get their questions together. I think perhaps what might be helpful for people to hear would be perhaps from a couple of our year 11 students, whether they feel that they're getting the kind of support and challenge that they need, particularly at the moment, obviously, in terms of being ready for their GCSEs. So I don't know if some of our year 11 helper students could perhaps say whether they feel that they're getting enough challenge and support with what they're doing at the moment. Hello. Hi Natalie. Hello, Natalie. <laughs> um, I definitely do. I feel that our emails that we send in are always replied to within a decent amount of time to help us. And I feel like there's many different things going on to get involved with um, in the school community as well as through different subjects. 
Okay, thank you for that, Natalie. I don't know, Macy, Saffron, would you like to add something to that? Yeah, I um, agree. I think we get yeah. pushed like past our abilities and it's just really helpful to know that you always have the support as well. Mm -hmm. So can I ask you, Macy, before we go to Saffron, can I ask you, Macy, and, we'll, and obviously Natalie and Saffron can say as well, in terms of next year and your application to come into the sixth form, what can I ask what subjects you're thinking about at the moment? Um, at the moment, I'm thinking about taking biology, psychology and PE. At um, A-level. And then yeah. any thoughts about university subjects yet or top or i'm not too sure at the moment but i was thinking about anthropology okay Ooh. really interesting Thank yes you. i've got some really good resources on that i've been speaking with the um london anthropology society and they've actually sent me some lovely bits and pieces through so i'll i'll put something on your year group classroom for that macy sorry saffron what were you gonna tell us how you're finding the support um, I was just going to say that every week um, our Key Stage 4, head of Key Stage 4 um, leader, um, applies on to Show My Homework a weekly revision task table, which gives us like extra tasks for each subject to really expand and revise our topics for GCSE. And you find that helpful? Yeah, it's quite helpful because sometimes when you're GCSE, and you have quite a lot to cover for subjects, you don't really know what kind of topic to work on, really. Mm -hmm. Good. OK, I've, I don't know, I'm sure you can see this as well, Miss Corbishley. I've got a, I've just one seen, question yeah. has come. Do, do you want to take this one? Yeah, and... so I can see the question here. Do you have to complete the flyers challenges in all the topics? No, you don't. If you complete all the flyers challenges in music, for example, then you will become a Fernhill Flyer with a speciality in music, if that makes sense. Because we're very aware that we're all very different people. And I mean, if I if I was back in year seven, I don't think I would choose certain topics. <laughs> but maybe looking at the super curriculum, there would be something that that would that would pique my interest. So the answer is no, you don't have to complete every single challenge in every single topic. But if you complete all the flyers challenges in one subject, then yes, you will become a flyer with that subject, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, uh, I'm just wondering, maybe we haven't heard from our sixth formers yet. So thank you mm -hmm. to year 11. So our sixth form house, I know we've got Luke and Christina and Rio. I wonder if one of you lovely three people would like to just talk to us about your next steps, kind of what your plans are, where you're at, what you're doing at the moment and, you know, what, what the next stages will be for you. I don't know, Rio, are you, can you tell us about your plans? Um, um, so, I've applied to university to do psychology at the moment. That's obviously like where I'm heading. And then hopefully after that, I'm thinking of like specialising in a field. But at the moment, I've decided to do psychology in case like I do change my mind, like, like when I keep going through the course. OK, can I ask you where you've applied? Which universities? Yeah, um, so I've applied to Leeds University, um, Nottingham University, Bangor, which is in Wales, um, Hertfordshire. Is that it? That's not yeah, I think they were the ones I thought. That's probably your limit, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> that sounds really good. Excellent. Anybody and uh, Luke, Luke, I know your camera isn't Luke. working, Luke, but could you talk to us about your plans post university? Because you actually um, you weren't thinking of applying to university at all when you were younger, were you? No. So uh, when I was sort of well, I mean, even in still in year twelve, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to. Uh, apply to university but uh, in the end I did and I applied to study mathematics at uh, Oxford UCL University of Exeter Royal Holloway University of London and uh, University of Hertfordshire. No and we're really really pleased that you did apply because um, I'm sure Luke won't mind me saying he is incredibly academically able his GCSE results were just phenomenal and um, the fact that Luke wasn't even going to apply um, was was quite devastating so I'm very pleased Luke that you did apply because it, it will be life-changing for you going to university 
Um, so you're just waiting to hear back now, aren't you? To hear where you're going. Yes, just waiting to hear back. It's probably a good thing my camera's not working, Miss. She's also me <laughs> blushing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good thing. And uh, Christina, how's your sixth form experience been? Um, it was pretty good, I'll say. Oh, my camera's not working, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I'm really enjoying it. I thought it was going to be like really difficult, but I found really helpful for my teachers. It did quite a lot for me, especially that um, English is not my first language. I find yes. it really supportive. Yeah. Good. That's really good to hear. Yes, I remember when you joined my English class, Christina, and you started speaking English so quickly, you picked it up amazingly quickly. It was very impressive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Just seeing who we've got here from year 10. We've we got anyone from year 10 here? Can't see. We did have someone before, didn't we? we? Did. Oh, there you are, Liam. Liam and Harriet, you're both yeah. here. Fab. Uh, would you mind talking about how you chose your GCSE options? Um, because you're obviously in your first year of GCSEs now, aren't you? So, um, what help did you get choosing your options, and how are you finding that now? Um, I chose the subjects that I enjoyed learning the most and the, one I was, the ones I was getting uh, like the highest grades in. Very sensible. Mm -hmm. And how are you finding your first year of GCSE? Um, it's weird because of COVID. <laughs> it's strange. Uh, yeah, the subjects, they're quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, Good. Yeah, COVID makes it weird. It does, it does. I won't be here forever, will we? Are you finding, Liam, that you're getting enough work to do? I mean, is it challenging enough for you? That's that's the important question. Uh, yeah, I'm personally finding working? that we're getting, like, the right amount of work, not too much and not too little, and it's, like, the a good amount of challenge. Okay, that's that's good to hear. And a chance just to broaden as well. I guess access to some of these other resources is a really good way to broaden your base of understanding as well. So that when you come to look at your A-levels and then your university application, you've got a really good basis to work from. The point of, the sort of main point of the Fernhill Flyers programme is, as Mrs Ellis just said, to, to broaden your cultural capital, to widen your reading, to experience <coughs> outside the classroom, so that when it comes to making your decisions about your options and your GCSEs and going to university interviews, you have a, a much broader knowledge base to draw from, and you're not limited just to what you learn in the classroom. Um, I've just seen a couple of questions. Nuki, you have a question. If there are two subjects you want to study and they're in the same area, can you do them both? Um, I'm assuming that's a question about GCSE or A-level options. Is that, is that right, Nuki, or, or was it about Yeah. Something? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so when, um, when you're in year nine, um, in fact, our year nines have just had their options evening virtually on YouTube. When you're in year nine, that's when you choose your options. And we have, hi Nuki, <laughs> and we have option blocks. Um, so what we try and do is we try and, and, and spread those out so that we accommodate the students. That's right, isn't it, Mrs Ellis? Yes, so what we actually do, unlike, I mean, lots of schools, they will set the option blocks. They'll put the subjects in the blocks based on what's kind of most suitable within the school for the, for the staffing and so on. What we try to do, because we're slightly smaller, it means that we would like to start from you as our basis. So what we do is we will consult with you in year nine, first of all, and ask you what kinds of subjects you're thinking about. And then depending on what our year nine students tell us, we'll design our our option blocks around kind of satisfying the largest possible number of students that we can with their options so starting with you as the main thing thinking about what you are looking at and what you're interested in then we design the option blocks around you so 90 percent about 95 percent of the time students will get all of the choices straight away because we've we've kind of based it around you from the start so that's that's the process and it's the same for A-levels as well, actually, isn't it? Your 11s, you're applying at the moment, aren't you, for your A-levels? And um, the option blocks are there, but they are flexible, aren't they? So if you want to do 
for example, English literature and media studies, which I know you do. Um, I have to say that because those are the subjects I teach. Um, mm -hmm. And you can put them both down um, and we will work the staffing around it to suit you. Um, Mr. Tyler, yes, I will be sharing the recording of this after the session. As soon as it's downloaded, I'll, I'll send that out via Share My Homework and Google Classroom so everyone can access that. Um, how do you submit evidence of completed flyers work? Um, it depends what the work is, um, and you can either send it directly to me or you can give it to your subject teacher and they will tell me. Um, so, for example, if it's artwork, um, your sketchbook, you can show me your sketchbook or you can show your teacher your sketchbook. Um, if it's music, then you can, you know, um, record yourself um, or I can speak to Mrs. Landsman if she's seen you playing something in a lesson. So it's, there isn't a sort of formal way of submitting it, um, but you can always send anything to me via Show My Homework or Google Classroom or email um, if, if we're not in school. Okay, that answers that. I've had one just quick query, which I think we did cover earlier, but just to be absolutely clear, um, if you're looking for where the Fernhill Flyers work is, you go to the learning tab on the front page of the website, go down to where it says Fernhill Flyers and click on that. And that will take you to what we call the super curriculum, which tells you where and then there are tasks and things that you can do there. And then as Miss Corbishley says, you can then send it into the subject teacher or direct to Miss Corbishley. So in terms of show my whole, oh, there we go. Look, Miss Corbishley yeah. showing you right now. So it goes to the learning tab, Fernhill Flyers. Yeah. It's not going to appear on show my homework, which I think was your question. So there we go. So you would just click on the year group that you're looking for and then you will find it. OK, so we've got all the resources there and then we've got the year seven super curriculum here. And then you just. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. OK, so they are um, each subject. Let me stop sharing that now. Okay, we've also got um, a couple of Fernhill Flyers videos on YouTube. I did send one of them out to everybody, I think, on Show My Homework, but I'll send the link around again on Google Classroom and Show My Homework after this. Um, there's a short introduction to Fernhill Flyers that we recorded for the year sixes as part of their transition. Um, and there's um, a sort of activities you can be doing during lockdown video. It's quite long, it's half an hour of me talking about things you can do, but you can skip over the ones that aren't relevant and just read the bits that are relevant to you. Um, but as I say, keep an eye on the Instagram as well, the Fernhill underscore Flyers Instagram account. And obviously keep checking the Fernhill Facebook and Twitter because we try and update that as often as we can as well. Are there any other questions? No. Okay. In that case, I'll hand over to you, Mrs Ellis. Well, really, just to say, lovely to be able to kind of catch up with people, even though we can't see all of you. It's just great to know that we are collecting together, even if it's in cyberspace and not in reality. And just to say thank you for giving your time and attention. And I hope this has been helpful for you and has given you some more things to think about. And to bear in mind that there is, we are always here and we want to talk to you and hear from you about what you're thinking, about where, you're, you know, where your plans are going, how you're getting on with the super curriculum work and just stay in touch and stay connected with each other as well, because that's really important. We know now that obviously lots of research be going on since since we started with lockdowns last year and we know that it's really really important for you all to stay connected with each other as much as that you are with us as a school so please do stay connected and link up and let us know if there's anything else that we can do to support you but we can't wait to have you back in school in the meantime stay connected <laughs>